Are we good? Like this? Good. Okay. I hope the sound is okay. Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to shop visits number one. And yes, this is officially number one because number zero was in Amsterdam. I'm in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. I'm at Wheel Love Skate Shop. I'm with Sukits and with Yang. And we're gonna talk a little bit about their skate shop. So, I only have a microphone for, well, traveling reasons. Let's just stay that way. <laughs> and I'm gonna let them talk. So, Sukits, why a skate shop? Well, Yang and I, we've been friends since we were, I wanna say, nine. Yeah, we were friends since nine years old, so we are now 39, so that's a good three decades. So we started skating together when we were in high school, when we were, uh, what were we, 13 I think. So skate, 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 and of course every single skater wants to have a skate shop. They want to have something more than just skating, they want to have an active part in the industry. So that's how we started. So we started skating together a lot and we started putting together our own events, started doing our own uh, parties, uh, we're getting things going for the local skate scene. And then one day we said, you know what, we both had uh, normal jobs. We were both working in advertising. He was doing designing and we said, you know what, it's, it's not very fulfilling life. So I said, let's do a little bit something more. So what we did was we came up with Wheel Love. This was back in 2006 and we said, okay, so Wheel Love is going to be just an outlet, a creative outlet for the two of us. Two bladers just wanting to do stuff. So what we did was we made shirts, we silk screened our own shirts, we silk screened hats, we made everything. And with that, we rolled our money, we got uh, the right exposure, we made the right friends, the right connections. And we also, at one point, we even managed through the help of one of the local skate shops in uh, Malaysia back in the day, uh, Rupert Rich. He connected us with suppliers that could make blank wheels. So we brought in blank wheels and we could, you know, give the local skaters something that they really needed because bang this is like in the early uh, mid 2000s where so you get wheels at the most affordable price correct so so fast forward till we were 29 and we said okay you, I, I wasn't happy in my job he was kind of uh, you know we were just like is this it you know do we just have a side project and then we have our jobs that we go and spend our days and not happy with us so we were 29 and said you know what we're going to be 30 soon this was in 2009 we said we're going to be 30 soon just to, this is what you want to do so we've always talked about this skate shop thing this skate thing like what do you want to do about it so I said you know what let's do it so if by when you're 29 going on 30 you said risky no doubt but if it doesn't work out you can always go back to work you can find a job and go back to an agency and do whatever it is that you were doing before so thankfully that was 2009 and it's 2019 now 10 years down the road you know we both quit our jobs full on and this is what we're doing so it's been fun it's been a tough ride but you know we're still here and we're still making this work that's awesome let me just say that one thing that he said that i don't really know if i agree with it which is like we all want to have skate shops i agree with one part of it and i'm sorry i'm gonna go there to yang like right now but it's like i do think that we all need skate shops, but not everyone really want to own one. They all, they all yeah. want to have one in their town. <laughs> For sure. Everyone would love to have a skate yeah. shop in their town, but not everyone wants to, run. wants to run a skate shop. But the thing is, like, were you skating a lot longer before you start the skate shop, or it was just a... Um definitely i mean definitely we were skating like really long i mean we we started when skating when we were 13 you know and at least a good 15 years before the idea of coming up with a skate shop i mean we we started the brand first you know we loved the brand which was uh, merchandise wheels stickers hats t-shirts then that's how it really grew you know like because we were, we were creating we were creating a brand and then you know, people were supporting us and friends were like buying us. Hey, you know, we really like what you're doing. And I guess th at that point, you could continue with creating more clothes or then I guess it's also in that point um, when the idea of coming up with a skate shop was really because there wasn't that many skate shops and uh, internet uh, e-commerce wasn't ready. So a lot of times you couldn't buy online or you could go to like you know back then maybe team paradise but all you did was look at a two-year-old catalog you know so nothing was new so i guess it really came up 
at the point where we just knew that okay what's after the brand was really to open a skate shop because then i have access to all the skates that i wanted okay. you know i guess that's that's a dream to a lot of kids okay. you know, that um not having a skate shop what you say is probably right you know not having a skate shop but having not owning access. one not yeah. owning one but yeah but having access to a skate shop so i guess that's how this thing does come to some fruition and some fact truth as well to what you're saying the tower really the skate shop so yeah back to your question were we skating more than doing the skate shop yeah we were skating a lot we skated mm-hmm. everywhere i mean we didn't have cars we were kids you know we we skated the obstacle we skated back from the obstacle it was just skating everywhere okay. yeah Okay, well, I was talking actually during the weekend. I was talking about skating to places being a really cool way of advertising skating because, like, I see that a lot of people in, especially in Malaysia, from what I've seen until now, there's like the aggressive skaters, and then there's the um, there's the um, the urban skaters or whatever. There's very few people that actually do both. I think some might do, but there's not a lot of people that skates a little bit more than one type of skate. And I fully respect that. There's most of the places in the world it's like that. But in the end, a lot of times we don't understand why skating is not growing the way that we want. But like the less people see it, the be- the less people know what we do. Sure, yeah. So get like getting stuck in a skate park. Or getting stuck skating in that ledge back and forth it's not sometimes the most appealing for whoever but sees you gotta it. you gotta look at a point of view from your regular joe skater i mean he's not he's not there to save the industry it's not yeah, his job to save obviously. the industry you know so i don't i it's it's an it's a responsibility we want them to have or we want them to care yes. about this but it's okay i mean do what you do you know what it's better than not skating it's you what you say right now you know what I sometimes need that type yeah. of call because a lot of times I like I'm no one I'm no savior no shit I, I'm nothing but like oh, I, no, 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 so I, modest no, no no what I'm trying to say is like I, I want to do the best that I can for the sport that I like but a lot of times just like you said I can't expect people yeah. to do things like I know that when I made a Solomon video people took it that way like it's the truth i fully understand that like people skate because they enjoy it yeah. and i can't expect people to try to save something but one thing is sure everyone likes to have a place where they go and they can choose from and more than that a place that they can go and they can actually try the skates not choosing from it like try the skates and that's actually one of the biggest problems yeah. with online shops nowadays <clears throat> yep uh, now the question is looking at your numbers in Malaysia what do you think is like the percentage that goes online and the percentage that goes in shop I think the online is still quite low um, probably 80 20 80 brick and mortar 20 percent online okay so the and the online is really guys from out of kl kuala lumpur so they would have to opt for an online purchase so it gets shipped to them and meaning they also don't have the means to come to where we are so that's why they have to buy online okay. and then I, I guess it's pretty much the same all across the world how big is how big is malaysia malaysia is 30 million uh, KL is about I don't know four, four million. And not a big, uh, geographically not a big country. Unfortunately, separated by a huge ocean. So we got like peninsula and once uh, the peninsula on one side, then we have Sabah and Sarawak on the Borneo side. So shipping is a bit of a. But like distance-wise, what would be the distance for someone to come from the, like, the further part uh, of the country to the furthest part let's say you come from Sabah which is on the furthest tip of Borneo like 2-3 hours Sabah. flight but I think the end of the day it's it's I guess, I guess it's all relative if you ask an American to say to drive from one part of California to the other and it takes them like 2-3 hours or 4-5 hours or whatever it is to them it's like yeah I'm just going there whereas in Malaysia if you ask them to drive one hour just like to the next town they're like oh I'm going down south I'm going to another country so you know it's it's all relative so we it's 
I think to, to, to go back to your point about about ship about how our online store and our sh- how shipping works with us is that shipping is expensive in Malaysia unfortunately it's not like in China where you know you can reach f- further distances for much less over here it's not very competitive we're in, with the rates aren't that great but a lot of times the online shop just serves as a catalog to show them what's available and for them to want to buy something online and if it's worth like you know in ringgit it's like four five hundred ringgit and they're just kind of oh i don't want to give this guy so much money and i don't trust them i think there's that's, still that that's level what of i was trust, going yeah. now i was going to go to the trust part yeah so they and they don't feel comfortable buying something that they you know, need to change size and whatever it is and you know that's always the second question that they ask oh how much what if what if i change size and whatever it is so then you got to guide them through that process and stuff so a lot of them prefer to come to the shop and buy. So if they are further away from out of town, sometimes they bite the bullet and they do it anyway. But yeah, of course, there, there are many cases where they see what they, they like online, whether they live like five hours away or four hours away or just down the road, then they just try to come here later and get it. It's, uh, it's awesome for skating because you can actually show them skating in a different way than online online you you, you don't have that man yeah. that much we always, access to that yeah, person yeah, we always want them to come to the shop because i can talk to you so much more i can i can explain better and touch and feel and how the wheels roll which is why our shop is done up the way it is retail wise there's not much space we don't really care for space uh, shelves of skates anymore it's not so important to us we needed that space in front of the shop where the kids could skate and more importantly try what they buy so once you buy I don't want you to like oh take the skates home and then oh, I'll find time next week to skate try it on no buy it go outside the door right now and try it so the park out there works well for us like that okay so probably when you're watching this you might have watched already a video that we just filmed right now which is basically this shop it's at the moment we are inside a container and this container has skates and then outside the container they have like a little service place and then right outside this area where there's like the service place for skates and the the container where we actually are then there's a little skate park like it's not really a skate park i would say yeah it's it's a grind it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's like a grind box yeah, a few flat yeah, banks yeah. it's like it's it's like a plaza thing it's just enough for you to try your skates and a lot of our customers are young kids skateboarders or road raiders or whatever who don't need that huge fly box or that you know mega ramp or anything they just need something a manual pad a grind reel so we start small we'll we'll slowly keep on adding more obstacles but our plan is to eventually make this into a full-fledged skate park but interesting enough is that yes i know that you do a lot of classes here but what i was going to say is that right outside that little space that i just told you that you guys used for like people to test the skates and do lessons and all that this is located inside a super kids friendly place so there's like one of those trampolines places where people bring their kids there's like a a family restaurant on the other side of the shop there's like all these kids activities and birthday parties happening which actually brings a a lot of kids here now the question is is that actually doing something for skating do you think the kids in malaysia are attracted to skating Skating has been out of the light. I mean, just like everywhere else in the world, it, you've not seen skating. You don't see it on TV. You don't see it on magazines. They don't even know what it is. They don't even know that it's. I'm going to need to interrupt yeah. you. Does anyone still watch TV in Malaysia? Is it that good big Good point. Still? That's a good point. Well, actually, you know what? Terrestrial and satellite TV is still kind of there. They're still... But it's dying. So let's, it is, let's stop with that excuse, please. <laughs> the TV mm, excuse. Well, it's not really an excuse. My point is that they don't see it. it I mean, I'm saying... They don't see skating, number one, and the fact that they don't see it in their chosen media or whatever this be it online or whatever. I mean, if, if your Facebook feed is not made out of any skaters, you're not going to see any skating. Yeah, but no. that's that's with every other sport correct, and correct. some of the other sports. Yeah, actually. so my, well, I guess I guess what I'm saying is that we there are not many skaters. Yes, uh, what's hap- what what we're we doing about it? Well, I mean. We being in a place like this really helps us because you got kids outside that are your active kids or parents that let the kids do something active and they've never seen skating. And they say, Oh, that's where they skate, that's where they buy a robots, that's where they skateboard. And they may not buy it today, but they came for a birthday party this week and then they say, Oh, I know where to buy skates when, it, when it's their turn to buy it. Uh, they want to skate, they know where the skate shop is. So. Yeah, I fully, I fully agree yeah. with what you just said, but the question is, I think you maybe I didn't did it right but like going straight to the point are kids really attracted to skate you think like you you know you told me that like the eyeballs are on Mm. you Mm. 
but do they come for curiosity? Do they come to see the actually, skates? Actually, they do. they do. I mean, to be honest, uh, we when we first started, we when we first moved here about two years ago, um, we didn't have any rental skates, and now on a on a very busy day with a trampoline park right behind us, we could probably rent out like twenty pairs of skates in a whole day. You know, and these are kids who've never skated and we charge a really uh, low fee of just 10 ringgit for an hour and the kids just get on the skates, we give them a helmet, just make sure that they don't break anything, you know, with a, whatever liability it is, but then they skate around. They don't know how to skate, but they just put on the skates. And on a good day, we can get like 20 kids skating. And we'll ask, we'll always ask them, you know, have you skated before? You know, and probably 70% of them say, no, I've never skated before. So and do, do you ever do you give them any type of help whenever they never we, skated or? If they've never skated, we'll give them the basics, you know, you know, put your feet in a V position, you know, how to get up. If you fall down, you know, and if you're about to fall, you know, you just grab your knees and, you know, all the basics of stuff. And that will really, our goal of that was really to translate them into skate classes, mm. you know, because getting, and the, we're talking like six year old, seven year old kids, you know, and they won't have the money to pay and they are here with their parents. And really the, the next barrier is really the parents and not the kids anymore. So then we will have to talk to the parents and tell them like, hey, you know, your kid's not too bad. You know, he can skate, he's got a bit of talent, you know, and you don't have to buy skates for them. All you need to do is if you want, you can sign them up for a class you know and you can use your skates we'll provide the skates we'll provide the coach you know you will provide the safety gears all you need to do is just bring the kids you know put them through four classes and see they love it or not you don't even have to buy a skates for them yet you know four classes later you know maybe the kids like it maybe they, they hate it you know but if they like it then think about maybe you want to invest uh on maybe just a pad sets first because that's hygiene purpose you know you yeah. want your kids to have his own helmet and not share sweat with some other kid you know and then have next the next barrier so we we start tearing the barriers down of the the excuses of not skating mm. because i think skating is it helps the kids in physically mentally you know it, it gets them strong and not just sitting behind a screen on a phone you know playing playstation or nintendo you know really just get the kids out and start skating and it really helps our industry it helps the retail it helps, you know, the health of kid, the kids. Okay, you, I think you touch a subject which is actually something that I think it's really important, which is the way that skating is being advertised over the last few years. I'm not saying someone is doing it right or someone is doing it wrong. Obviously, that's super subjective and it depends on the place. I'm going to give you a few things that I've been watching and from people that I speak with and then I would like you to give me your opinion especially here because it's like as an example in Hong Kong in China I've been told that if there's no competition the type of skating that I like to do to go out and skate it's actually not as appealing because parents they want their kids to have goals and to compete and to be rewarded and they want kids to be like that especially in those places then some other companies or some other in some other places skating is being advertised as as something for the fun of it and the kids enjoy it and big smiles and they use colors and it's funky and it's trendy they try to make it like if it's trendy but until now, I didn't saw anyone doing one thing which is the most important thing and where parents actually spend money with their kids and that is health. And that's something that you just said right now. Skating is, it's in my opinion, and I've studied sports science, it's one really complete sport for motor development. Balance. Um... um strength force yeah. core muscles yes I um uh, i call it coordination, coordination. Yeah. all these things that like respect because you, you, you're that's not like a motor development but it's something that you like the way of acting with your teachers in a different yeah. way and like the mental aspect the the the, the 
the benefits that the child gets from skating isn't just physical. Of course, yeah, your stronger core, stronger muscles and all that, great. A lot of sports do that too, sure. But the thing I always tell parents when it comes to skating is look at look at how skaters are. I mean, I'm, I'm using ourselves as an example. When we were younger, when we skate, we said, like, okay, I got to do this grind. How do I do it? You break it down. So okay. Approach at ledge at this speed, jump at that angle, land here, do this, switch up, whatever. You break down the problem. So when we come here and we teach our classes, we of course we make it very fun for them, but the biggest lesson that we want to give our students when it comes to learning to skate is that everything is a problem, everything can be solved. You I'll tell you now, say, you're gonna do a 180 by the end of today. Can you do it? No. The girls will I mean the kids will always say, That's it. Don't worry, we'll do it slowly. Show you how to go backwards, show you how to turn, show you how to land, bit by bit, half an hour later, you're doing one day. Yeah, it's like, when you're talking, so it's, it's mental, it's a, it's a great mental exercise okay, that they can take to do other stuff. You're talking about progressions and progressions are used in any other sport. I know a lot of people, it's again, Olympics and all that stuff, but most of the Olympic sports, like gymnastics, it's trained under progressions. Hmm. You're not going to do a double flip yeah. If you don't yeah. do a one flip and you do one and a half with the rope, yeah, you, you, with a it's yeah, it's yeah. it's it's progressions and you need those. It's like telling a kid to do a seven twenty. He goes from imagine you go from the three sixty to the seven twenty. No, <laughs> it's a five forty. And even before the from the five forty to the seven, you can even go to a little hip and do like a six thirty. It's like there's progressions and that's super important. But if you would have like what I was trying to tell you it's not even that it's like when parents come to the shop if you want to show them like imagine is there do you think there's any brand at the moment in the market or there's anyone actually advertising skate in a way that if parents go and look for skates they see this is this is good for my kid this is like an investment that I do but it's not just because of the fun of it, yeah. but it's good for his future in a different way. I think I, I know what you're getting at, but I think we just live in a place where, well, maybe I'm talking about from our experience, they usually come in with zero in their head. Negative, if, negative zero, if anything. They come in and say, I don't know anything, you tell me what's good. And then I give you all the information. So to, to, to ask me, to ask us and say, oh, do they, do they see anything? It's like, I don't know if they see anything. That's the thing. A lot of them, just the parents show up and say, my kid wants to skate. Tell me which one's good and I'll buy that. So yeah. you're telling me that most of the parents that come here don't do their homework. Like in, in South Africa, I can tell you right away, yeah. whoever comes to my shop, most of the times they Google it before. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they get there, they, most of them, they know the products that I have and they Google it before. And that's uh, what I'm saying. It, it happens. Of course it happens. But I think most of the time when we're talking about kids, especially the parents just heard the kids say, I want rollerblades, Google inline skate shops, Malaysia, oh, rollerblade shops, skate shops, whatever. And then we are there and that's what, how they get to us. <laughs> what do you think I think? He's going to agree with me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to make you another question, okay. which is like, you just said something interesting when we were talking about that, about that today. Well, okay, I, I, I'll answer that. Okay, okay. I'll answer that because um, I'm sure people, if you're a smart consumer, you would do a bit of a search on the internet, you know, what kind of results you'll get. If you don't call anything to your customers. Uh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying, because I'm sure they all do, right? And then it becomes a price war. Because when you search on the internet, everything they tell you is nearly the same. Because they will tell you um, aluminum frames, ABEX 7 bearing, right? Uh, but that's what I'm saying that it's wrong. And I'm, I'm exactly that's my point. So once they search everything that is online, spec to set, spec, if they find everything the same, what is next? Price, right? And we are aesthetics too. Aesthetics too. But the only problem with okay, maybe it's our pro the problem with us is because Decathlon is eight hundred meters away. Right. Okay, for people listening to this, the Carlton is like a big chain store. They're big in Europe. They're like big in Asia now. I yeah. don't know if they're in America too, but it's like a big chain store that produces a lot of skates and slowly it's increasing the quality of the product. So it becomes like a threaten for, for a skate shop. Uh, not the skate shop. I mean, the sports shop in, in general. I mean, you go, I go there and get swim gear for my daughter. Okay, That's so really you, you actually I'm a consumer as well, right? Yeah. And I go there. 
And I look he's at it like the devil. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not about th- I'm not saying no, that. No, but it- he has a good point. At the end of the day, we all consumers. We want the best deals. And you're right. I, I, I wish I'm not gonna say this, but his case aren't bad. Decathlon skates aren't the worst. I mean, okay, the, the Decathlon skates aren't bad if you know which one are the ones that are not bad because there are really, <laughs> really bad ones as well. There are ones that you really cannot fix because we get a ton of Decathlon skates that comes in the shop and maybe the older models. <laughs> maybe the older models, but but they are good ones, agreeing to keys. But there are some which are really bad as well. Okay. Right. Can I give you my opinion about the Catalan? Because yeah. it's funny that you touched about it. So here's the thing, and it, I'm going to to mix that with what I was going to ask you next, which is the Catalan. Yes, and they're growing just like the Catalan and like every other big chain store. Most of these are growing, and the places where they produce skates because they're growing, they're getting better deals because they produce more. They have access to different molds. They have. I wouldn't. I don't even know if I can say they have more knowledge. I think they just produce more numbers so they can get a little bit better quality for a better price than most of us. Because in general, skate companies they produce a certain amount, and then companies like that they produce much more because it's the same more skate more being more sold in like I don't even know how many thousand stores. But even if they have a lot of money to optimize their their production, no to optimize the the way that people can find them on Google and mm. stuff like that mm. they usually optimize like sports in general yeah. they we're lucky with something which is skating at the moment is not that big that they're going to spend that amount of money optimizing their skating part now the question for you guys is like do you guys feel the need We were talking a little bit about this today. Do you feel the need of optimizing what you do like so that people can find you online or because there's not a lot of competition you just haven't been doing yeah, it Yeah, I think way. I think we for Wheel Love we've been in a very we came up at the right time. Let's put it this way. We started in 2009, I mean, maybe even the website started even way before that 2006. So a lot of links coming in, no links going out. So our page ranks has always been not bad. And when we started Facebook, this was before algorithms and you know everything you post goes out. Even for Instagram, when we when we started, everything you post, everybody sees. You get like thousand likes, easy, no problem. Boring posts, still you get a thousand likes. So things are changing. Things are definitely harder. I think everybody knows this. It's not just for skate shops, of course. So you're telling me that I'm saying is that yes, we 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 do see the need, and it's it's things that we. Sometimes you can say that, oh, what are you doing about it? It's like, oh, we're still learning. We don't really know what's We right. We all are. Yeah, right. I don't know what's wrong, what's right. I'm I'm picking up things here and there. It's like, okay, this works. Let's do this. Engage this way. Engage that way. I mean, it's as simple as starting last week. I just decided, oh, maybe we start uh, sharing other people's posts in stories on Instagram. For example, something simple like that. I said, like, okay, let's try that. Let's see how it goes. So we're still trying. You ask me what's right, what's wrong. I said, like, do I want to pay for ads right now? We tried that for a while. Did it make a big difference? I don't know. So we 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 are kind of, I guess you could say we are a bit. I guess not stubborn. It's just we're not sure yet. So to answer your question, long long way around to go about it. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It's, Whoever it's, listens to this because they want to know yeah, about what's going on. I guess. Um, We don't know. We don't know yet what needs to be done or how. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, just hiring an SEO consultant will just who, who who looks at us like, oh, you're a retailer. Okay, this is my retailer package. This is how much it's going to cost. Mm. Does it work? I don't know. Do I need to figure something out, a custom tailor package for ourselves that, that we can do by ourselves? I'm not sure. So I don't know if anybody out there has any answers. Uh, I'm sure our emails at the bottom or our contact details. Yeah. yeah, send me proposals. We'll figure something out. Yeah, it's like the whole thing with the way marketing and the way that you position yourself and the way that you people see you digitally. Hmm. It's actually changing consistently. We were talking about that. The way that the social medias make the social media platforms make whatever they're doing appealing for the users. It's by actually changing the algorithms. I know that everyone learned, heard about the algorithm, but every time that people are starting to think that they learn about something, they need to change it because otherwise, yeah. there will be someone that comes around and just kill it completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, 
you actually need to be consistently I think I, I don't know I don't know if this is if this is an old man old, old fashioned way of thinking but I feel that you cannot discount you cannot Okay, so social media is important for sure. No, no doubt about it. We live in that world right now. We came out in the right time, but nothing beats customer service. Mm, I fully no- agree with that. Nothing beats a smiling face at the shop, who isn't the coolest boy in town. It's like, oh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna talk to you because you know you're not cool. Enough. Our our thing has always been every damn message gets answered as soon as you bloody can. Every every DM, every Instagram, every and every text message, everything replied as soon as possible. Because we've all, we, I was I always ask when I talk to our team, our, our retail team. I say, you think about it. If you had a problem with a big company, and you'd say, oh, I'm gonna send them an email and tell them what I think, tell them fix this. In your heart of hearts, in, within yourself, you ask yourself, do you think they're gonna reply? And inside, you know, you're not gonna get it. So. The moment someone sends a company a message, I mean, sends us a message, and we reply within like what ten minutes. Oh my god! Thank you for your for your fast reply. It's like, oh, that's not very fast. Ten minutes is nothing. If I should have been there like one minute ago, uh, ten minutes, uh, nine minutes ago. So I feel that yes, there's all these things that need to be done. But if you can get all the eyeballs onto your cool little Instagram picture, but then nobody's replying, there's like oh how much, and then nobody replies. Everything down there, no reply, no reply, no engagement. What's the point? So you actually customer service is very very important, which is why when our our reviews, our comments that people give us, you know, and all the the, the five star reviews or whatever, it's like it's always oh customer service is good. That is what I want, and that what I think is very important because that's the one you take home, you take and tell someone else. The products may suck. The products may break. I mean, products. The skates are. I mean, skates. Come on, you're going to skate on them. You're going to. It's going to break, right? We'll and go, it's. We're we'll going to skate. Yeah, and I didn't make those skates. I can't be the one responsible for it breaking. I just sold you the skates, but it's my responsibility to fix it. Whether it costs you money, costs me money, that's besides the point. So it's my responsibility to say, look, okay, cool. Let's see what we can do about it. Okay, skates are actually a problem, but <laughs> <laughs> skates are a problem that. They do break, but they break less than they used to, and that's for the problem. Sure, so sure. let, let, let's let's get there in a second, because for you, for me, for you as a <laughs> shop, the, for all three of us, we, the truth <laughs> is, if the skates break, we sell more. But then at the same, that's true. it's as a skater, I want my skates to last. Actually, so, you know, what? You, you, it, that is not necessarily true. If the skates break, you sell more. Yeah, but I don't want to have to face an unhappy customer obviously i know that that's exactly what i'm saying that's like you know that would be as a businessman the right way to think but then as a skater dude if your friend is just going to skate with you his skates break like you know, oh, damn I, I man i'm so you, sorry about there's one more level to this it is yes as a businessman yeah businessman who doesn't have to face the customers oh come on break 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 you know rivet that shit <laughs> rivet the cuff to the buckle to the everything so that when the tiny little cuff breaks or the buckle breaks change the whole damn skate it's like f- the, the thing that I hate the most is skates that are riveted through and through it's like I know it's cheaper a little bit I know it makes life easier for you to manufacture but fucking pisses off the skate shops and the customers and they still do that I know behind me I'm sure there's a few I don't know if everybody does it now. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes you pay, you get what you pay for, but sometimes, of course, it is, you know, you can drill it out, but it makes an unhappy customer, and I don't want to be the one. Hey, okay, so I said, the businessman may make that decision because the financial controller say, oh, shave 10 cents off this by putting this, by, by not giving them by a screw, a by, put, by, by putting a rivet. And then is it worth that customer coming back all the way here? And on top of that, if they send it back, I have to send for shipping again. Usually, you can actually fix it. That's a lot of work to fix, like a riveted skate. Come back every every day that the skate is here sitting with me is a day that guy is not on the road enjoying his skates and promoting skating. Exactly. But we don't want them to promote skating. That's our job. Anyway, we do. <laughs> <laughs> you can promote it wrongly. Yeah. Yeah, well. They might promote it wrongly. <laughs> yes, not the way the Lino break. wants it. No, 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 the Lino wants it. Come on. <laughs> Especially if the skate breaks. Now, uh. going with a product, with a riveted product, mm. um, I know, mm-hmm. and it's nothing against any brand, mm-hmm. and I know that you have some co- some products behind that I know most of them, mm-hmm. but we speak a little bit about it over the last few days, about how you think and how you feel the market is changing like when it comes to 
the companies that you actually buy, mm -hmm. you see a change. Why do you think that change is happening? Is the price of the skate? It's your, you know, it's the quality of the skate. It's the price of the skates. Is it uh, the company that is undoing like a good enough marketing or branding or a good enough product? Is it um, your client that wants to pay less? Uh, what do you think it's happening? Uh, okay, I think I think. Keep in mind, we're in Asia, so we're in Malaysia. One one ringgit, sorry, uh, one euro is four ringgit here. Four ringgit basically buys you a meal a lunch. for lunch, right? Yes, I did have a good meal for uh, three years. <laughs> 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 interruption, 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 interruption. Sorry, I need to. Yeah. I had the best banana leaf for three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Six dollars for two hours with yeah, drinks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Two rivets <laughs> or two lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, you are so in, in, in we're in Asia. Money doesn't go very far over here, right? Skates isn't. Not everywhere in Asia, man. Well, I mean, Korea, what? Japan. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, in Malaysia, let's just say <laughs> Southeast Asia. Okay, not Singapore. Singapore. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ma well, let's just say Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay, okay. so. Skates isn't the first thing you want to buy. Of course, food on table is most important. We are going through some kind of political slash financial nonsense. Crisis. Going, I, I wouldn't say crisis. It's more like spa that. It's like just yes, just that yeah, spikes and down. That, that screws up with everybody. Like the ringgit just like tanked. You know, within six months we lost like hundred percent of its value. Wow. Okay, let's put it this way. Not hundred percent. It was it, it, in okay in July twenty sixteen. It was one US dollar was three point two ringgit. Six months later, it was one dollar four point two ringgit. So we lost, I mean, one hundred, yeah. you know, percent. So anyway, so things are. Th I'm just trying to paint a picture of how it is here in Asia, where money is not easy to get, like mm. everywhere else in the world, I guess. And skating isn't necessarily the best way to invest your money. To a lot of people, a it's man. Not a priority. You yeah, mean. it's not a priority. A pair of skates is some people's half month salary. And that, that 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 person may have six kids. If all six kids wants a pair of skates, he doesn't eat for what three months. I don't know. Well, <laughs> so that's that's where we live in. So this is our customer, right? They may be rich, but at the end, they, the money still doesn't come e easily for them, right? So some may be others, but anyway. So my my point is, why are there cheap? I guess what we try and get at is there are cheap skates out there. There's serious balls cheap skates in Malaysia. But I mean the skates itself, right? We got skates selling for fifty ringgit. Fifty ringgit is about ten euros, slightly more. Okay. All right. Not great. Not 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 functional in a sense. It's hard plastic wheels. Uh, really weird liners and funky stuff going on. So. Guy with six kids comes to our shop and says, Okay, I want to buy a pair of skates. And you know, I'm telling him, He's like, Oh, the cheapest I have is 300. And he's like, But that one is 50 doing it. Okay, I can buy six for that price. I got six kids. What do you want me to do about it? And I was like, I'll give you an example. Great. Just right now, just before we started this 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 interview, this guy message. It's a very interesting story. So this guy messaged, he bought something from online from Lazada. It's like an online platform that's similar to Alibaba and Amazon and stuff like that. He buys it. He he messages me. He's like, "Oh, it's the shop. I want to buy a pair of skates." Uh, and I said, "Okay, here's the site. Here's the prices. Starts from this. Oh, three hundred ringgit. Whatever is the cheapest skate. That's too expensive. I can't afford it." I said, "Well, anything less than three hundred ringgit isn't a very good skate." Then he says, "Oh, actually, I already have a skate." And I said, "Okay, then why do you see? I mean, I was trying to angle it into like, why do you see the need to change then if that is that cheap skate that you have is so good?" I said, "Oh, I ordered from Lazada." I ordered size 30, uh, 42, they sent me a 39 and they won't accept the refund. They won't accept the skates back and they won't give me my money back. So I'm stuck. So I cannot, and the skate was 150 ringgit. He, and then suddenly I'm put into the position of a, and then I looked at his profile and said, it's a school kid. It's a guy who's still in secondary school. 150 ringgit is a lot of money to a school kid. And here I am trying to tell him, oh, 300 ringgit is the best skate you can get. So if he doesn't have 300 ringgit, you might as well tell me, yeah, Ferrari is much better than my car. It's like, of course, I ain't buying it. You know, so th then suddenly he was like, okay, sh here, here we are. Here, here we are. We are at an impasse now. I know we are not making money from this kid because that's the reality of our customers. 300 ringgit for your cheapest case, which is, uh, let's see, your cheapest, like the Flying Eagle, like this one. All right. 
400, 300, not bad skates, good skates, right? Okay, good to start off with. Like the Wave is 339 ringgit, so close to a cheaper range. The guy can't afford it. He just can't. So, is what that the you think is that the type of client that would go to the Decathlon? Well, this guy went to Lazada and bought for 150. The Decathlon is about 200-ish. So, so here we are, this, uh, this situation with this boy, how do I help him? So, uh, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm changing the story. I mean, I'm, I'm going away from your question a little bit to give you a full story of what we did with this kid, which touches on customer service, which is what we talked about here. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I decide in my mind, so I, I ain't making money from this kid, man. But, most importantly, I still want him to skate. Right? If I'm not making a single cent, doesn't goddamn matter so long as he skates eventually. So I said, okay, we, we started up an online platform for a uh, Facebook platform for uh, secondhand skates. It's similar to Blade Trade, but it's Pasai in line. It's our mm -hmm. Malaysian ish side of town. I said, dude, try and sell it there. If somebody will buy it from you, at least you get back your money. And then after that, you come to us and then maybe look in there and try and get a secondhand pair of skates. If it doesn't, if the skates are not great, come back to us. We try. And you know, it, it transpires when the guy said, okay, thank you so much for helping me out. I mean, so, okay, I didn't make money, but I hope I got somebody to skate or at least get him yes. the right pair of skates. So, so that's customer service a little bit. So now back to uh, you asking us, why are, why are brands, why are skates so cheap here? Or why do people want to buy cheap skates? Because there are cheap skates. And that's the environment we live in. That's, that's the market we live but in. But is that why you, you like over the last few years, you say that it's been changing. The market is changing a lot. It's I think I think it's really price for. Pretty much, it's the, the 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 ringgit collapsing didn't help for sure. Of course, it was coming anyway, and you know, also it's the the fact that they can send stuff from China to Malaysia so easily, Taobao or whatever it is that they buy from, does not help. But I think that's also why we decided to like okay put more effort in our skate school as well. So if I am not selling you a skate, I'm teaching you to skate. If your first skate can be a fifty ringgit, sixty ringgit, whatever skate you buy, your second skate better be something good, something from a skate brand from people who actually skate. You know. Um, in fact, that's what we do a lot of the times when the students come in and say, "Oh, I bought this case. I want my my son to learn to skate." Look at that! What the hell is that? Plastic wheels and you know it's like. Tell what, especially on the, the floor outside, that must be funny. Yeah, so, um, put this aside. I'm going to get you something decent. Try this. So immediately, from the second, third, fourth class, when they come in, they never brought their skates again. They just use ours. Okay, so it's like you're trying to get like the the skates at a good price, but w with good quality enough. Mm -hmm. So like a top yeah. of the range skate would never sell in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Even even you won't say, you won't say they, of course they are yeah I mean you won't say never because um, I mean you have to work both sides of the spectrum and you you get guys who used to skate and they're probably thirty and they have a good career and they want to relive their teenage years and you probably could sell you know a pro model for a thousand five ringgit you know so you know those days are there but they are very rare I mean you could. We literally could count the amount of skaters. Okay, let's just say aggressive skaters. There's probably forty of them. Only fifty on a good day. Forty skaters. That's that's not. It's yeah, not, and I don't know the uh, <laughs> city, but it's not that small. The whole country. The whole country oh, is okay. only. The whole country, okay. bro. <laughs> okay. Thirty million. 40 skaters you do the math man okay. what's the percentage okay. you know then there's hockey there's you know slalom there's a speed speed probably five slalom probably i think i think 20. Let's, let's, let's just let, i mean the comments may come out and say dude i skate there you didn't count me you know what maybe we don't know but we're just kind of generalizing a bit it's just what we see of course there are guys who skate who bought a pair of usd from got from 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 europe and then that we never see them it happens right but yeah it, what it is at the end of the day it's small small the group it's it's not the, the specialist what we're saying is that the guys who have decided on their chosen path hockey aggressive speed the high-end skates that cost more than a thousand ringgit two thousand ringgit very very small okay so now i gotta ask this which is like we've been i wouldn't say blaming it a lot but yeah i'll, I'll use the word blaming because it's like it's a it's a super it's everybody's problem except mine <laughs> no man i'm not i'm not saying that maybe what i'm trying maybe it's a super strong word on blaming 
but we've, we've been saying that one of the main reasons uh, for like selling like more affordable skates and all that it's it's actually because of the economical situation of the country what about the other sports skateboarding what about the prices for skateboarding? no how is it going with those sports do you see because i do know that we love it's not just the inland skating shop we love is actually yes you started as inland skaters and it's your passion but obviously to make it survive and yeah. to make it actually grow. actually let's, let's let's rewind a little bit back to our origin story so yang and i we are kj rollers right kj rose is our crew that's where we grew up kj stands for clan Jaya. all right so i don't know kj as kind grind kj <laughs> Uh, KJ kind rind kind giant okay anyway so okay, so we 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 started we started, <laughs> we, started we started uh skating in the days where skateboarders would lit, would actually really hate you right what back was that? in the 90s in malaysia they they're a bit late to the scene i mean in the sense that they see the magazines in america say oh we're supposed to hate these little guys all right Just right on right down the window shout roller blades uh, whatever the Okay, so can, can you spit? You can. You're not gonna reach it. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, <laughs> there was a lot of animosity within skateboarding and rollerblading for obvious reasons. The same reasons that is happening all across all around the world elsewhere back in those days. But we lived in this tiny little well, not tiny. Is this this place that we lived in? There's a bunch of ledges it's, uh, where we skated every damn day, and it was us rollerbladers. And one day, skateboarders came and we were like, "Oh shit! Skateboarders are here. What are you gonna do about it?" They're like, okay, you skate here, I skate here. Cool. For ten, for like five, six years, we just grew up alongside each other. We started skating. BMX uh, riders started coming in and said, skate with us. It, it was a nice little place where everybody is saying, oh, I cannot skate in this place because of the real skateboarders. Like, we just didn't fully understand that because where we came from, skateboarders and road builders, we treated each other with respect. You know, they were our elder brothers who kind of something back when we didn't have cars, they would like drive us home if it rained and stuff like that. And I didn't, un- we didn't understand it when they say that, like, uh, yeah, we're not supposed to like those guys. So, <laughs> oh, well, they are not don't like us. We didn't understand it. So when the name Wheel Love, simply put, we love wheels, no matter what your configuration, your size, your size of the wheels, how it's arranged and whatever. You like to roll, I like to roll. Cool. So. That's how we started the shop. So when we started, of course, it's a business reason as well. If you put all your eggs into one basket, into inline skating, or worse, all into aggressive, which is what we do, right? Aggressive. If we all did it that way, then it's like, it seems a bit risky. So, but because we knew that I enjoyed playing Tony Hawk play, Pro Stick Skater 2 as much as anyone else. It's my favorite game. So I like skateboarding. I watch the videos. We get inspired by BMX videos and whatever. I don't see why I cannot sell it. So we sold it. And we did well i mean right now it's having so many different uh, a few different uh, categories does help us when blading is a bit slow skateboarding is there sometimes skateboarding goes down blading is there so it's good so of course some people may say like oh rollerbladers can shouldn't be riding uh doing skateboarding it's like i don't know but <laughs> the guy at the top of nike doesn't skateboard now does he yeah. you know they don't have a problem riding nike sv now do they so so be it. If Nike ever leaves, uh, I'm still here to see what happens. I hope it doesn't because. Sorry? Was if it? Nike ever wants to leave skateboarding. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If Nike ever leaves. It's skate- amazing. It's amazing how they hated Nike SB and Adidas like to death. They was like, oh, no, no, no. Call, 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 call. Now it's like, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Shoes are not bad. I quite like the shoes. If Nike leaves skateboarding and Adidas, if those two leave skateboarding, they die. Yeah, well, it's just the way it is. It's just a lot of the pro salaries come from the shoes. So yeah, yeah. it's the biggest salary. Oh, anyway, so back to us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> enough Nikes. <laughs> anyway, back to us. We, so that's where we came from. So we didn't see a problem with selling so many things. So that's why we are quite a wide range i mean even when we 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 knew what it was like to be the rollerblader in town who wanted aggressive skates and no shops had it we had to we took we took buses down to singapore we went to go sports go sports is a skate shop in uh, singapore he's been around since 1985 so he was a guy who brought in usds and razors and whatever have you so we would take a six hour bus ride down just to get a pair of skates and then get back up 
that's how bad we knew we knew that's how tough it was and skate shops came in skate shops left I mean aggressive skate shops came and left and you know all the while we just kind of like oh sometimes there's a shop sometimes there's no shop so we knew what it's like to have no retail support from your local scene a local industry or whatever it is so when we started a shop it's like okay we know this how do we one take advantage of this or, or at least make sure we don't lose out to help someone who needs help so when we had girls who came to us and said hey i want to start a, a roller derby team can you help us it's like sure we got in touch with sure grip ordered 20 pairs of skates help them get started uh, that's what we did and then when the long borders came in this, this was when long board in the 2010s or 2009s 2009s we were still somewhat new in malaysia they said hey no shop wants to carry long boards can you help us it's like sure we did that and then same with fixed gear to a certain degree we even did a little bit of bmx of course it comes and go because at the end of the day, our heart is in one thing but so long as someone wants it and they say hey can you help us it's like if it makes sense for all of us we'll do it because we know what it's like to be that guy who has the shop that doesn't do who, has, who goes to the shop hey can you bring this this, this? No, no 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 i don't now so that's why we have scooters now as well okay hearing you talk now makes more sense to me something that i'm gonna touch now which is actually quite funny it's this along the world there's very few places that in a city like kuala lumpur there's two skate shops now seeing the way that you're talking about other sports and how you guys somehow collaborate somehow <laughs> somehow uh, yesterday somehow we coexist no, s- no I mean, oh, somehow. Sorry, you meant other sports or other shops other even uh, at the moment other sports okay. i went to the skate park yesterday and the skateboarders were appreciating me yeah. skating with them yeah. They were cool. I was skating with the skateboard. On the, I do that like in Cape Town. I do that in Portugal. They're my friends and I respect them. I always have my own attitude. Like if someone makes fun of me, I don't let that shit happen. Like, sorry. But at the same time, they were actually, you could see that they were enjoying what I was doing. I was enjoying what they were doing. And seeing that happening a little bit in Kuala Lumpur, it's not just with me. I saw that happening with other skaters. Mm. So that somehow makes more sense to me why you and Idosh, mm. who owns other skate shop mm-hmm. in Kuala Lumpur, go along so well. So basically I today we played some game of, um, like the game of Blade, whatever you want to call it, outside. Mm-hmm. And he came with a few guys and it was cool. And then yesterday I was with them and they, I, I've been here for two days and you guys created a group that you guys like I, I've been in a lot of time with both of you no one said one single bad word against I think let's, let's 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 rewind this Idosh the three of us I mean, me Yang and Idosh goes back a long time we were skating together when we were teenagers when we started skating we skated with him we've been friends longer than we've been so called shop uh, competition competition right <laughs> but the thing is the between Doshi's case and Will Love, we have grown the pie together. Of course, one if he sells a pair of them skates, it maybe it's a pair of USDs that I cannot push to that same guy. It's alright. I mean, you know, we, we push it in a more holistic sense where you sound like you just, it's, it's, life is too short. The, the scene is way too small for you to fight. Like, we always tell the, the, like what you said earlier, it's like the kids in Malaysia or in Kuala Lumpur are so lucky to have two skate shops owned by lifers. It's like guys who whether this works out or not, I'm going to put my money behind this and then we're going to try and make this work, you know? It's not owned by businessmen who just kind of, oh, numbers are shit, I'm out of here. You know, it happens everywhere and all the time and it's great. We have a great working relationship with him too. It also comes to a point where the brands that we bring in, we supply to them. The brands that he brings in, he supplies to us. We work together. So That's Real that. love, man. All love. <laughs> okay, so... Actually, I should be sleeping. Huh? I slept like two hours. This is like killing me. Not this <laughs> is killing me. It's just like... Anyway, keep, we at keep least going. We, at least I got you that two-hour nap, man. Yeah. You yeah, didn't get that two-hour nap. Basically, yesterday I was getting till 2 a.m. And then I got to the room. I was editing till 4.30. And then I woke up <coughs> at 6.30. And then I we, thought you weren't going to get up at 6. No, I thought, no. you know what? He's not getting up. No, so, no. Whoa, he messaged, I'm up. So, uh, yeah, and then I skate, we skated like till 2. I fell. And then I was like, please, let me sleep like two hours after lunch. They did. And I'm here, super yeah, energized. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, so what's the skate you sell the most? Right now, the Micro MT Plus is doing us pretty good. 
Is it? Yeah, I it's know me. it's not just It's me, it's me, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we sold the it, pad just when you landed in Malaysia. That's, I don't know, maybe it's the Lino effect. It's like... That's the energy, man. Yeah, the yeah, energy that... You bring here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to put that in writing to show your bosses that... Like, no, man, yeah. it's not good. Lino sells skates when he... No, no, that's not. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was because... No, like it's, a, it's, 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 it's also because we got good support from Chi Siang and the local uh, micro skates distributor. I mean, of course, we sell a lot of other skates as well. I mean, and then if you ask me what's the best selling skate, the, power, the Play Life Bronx is like by far mm. everywhere you go Bronx the play life Bronx on power slide and all that so those are still pretty good selling mm. but right now it's, it hits but they nice don't make the Bronx anymore do they? Well, it's, under, it's under power slide 1 I think it got now. a little bit more expensive yeah. and it's 3 wheel yeah. skate yeah but it's, it's still good skate I mean anyway so okay we'll yeah, get that after yeah. we'll get that after <laughs> you, you're talking yeah, about no, so the, it's the, 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 the S the, the micro um, that one wants empty plus it, it does well it's, it's a, it hits a nice sweet spot between quality and price for us okay now mm. tell me something else because you were saying about the empty about the Bronx Hmm. And I actually uh, said that the newest model mm -hmm. is is three wheels. Hmm. What is your opinion about three wheels and four wheels? What do you actually think? Like, what's really your opinion as a shop Sometimes, owner? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. As a shop owner, hmm. if someone that never ever skated before, what's your opinion as the best skate for yeah. a beginner? Right? Sometimes we try to work with what the customer has in their mind. If, if they came in they said they want a four they, in their mind inline skates is four wheels and then you try and push them with three wheels doesn't doesn't help that the price is a little bit more usually for three wheels and then they I think which is better it depends on the customer of course and the I, I don't know how to your, 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 your partner is not answering my question yeah, yeah, yeah. What, do you, what, what, what do you think it's better three wheels or four wheels for a beginner for a beginner yes. oh for a beginner okay then it's easy for uh, a beginner because the the three wheels wheels are bigger it will be harder for uh, depending on his age what do you mean by bigger longer higher higher taller? bigger bigger wheel yeah but like okay so, so like when the wheel is big the spin is sl slower Oh, okay, that's what so, you mean. So when, you, when you're a beginner, it's a bit more difficult. To get acceleration. To get acceleration okay. compared, to a to, compared to four wheels, which is a smaller wheel. Okay, but that also, I can give you like the... I, I'm not defending anything, uh, but like it takes a little bit more to roll, but if it's like a rougher surface, it also rolls smoother. True. But at the same time, <laughs> it can also not roll that smooth because there's three points of contact instead of four. Yes, yeah, so, so it which is why we are which is which is why <laughs> which is why Kisa's answer was really if the customer had in his mind his or her mind that the inline skates has always to be four wheels then don't try and convert them because number one you will confuse them number two they will leave without a pair of skates you might as well sell them something and yeah, get them go home, do their homework. You know, yeah. I've, I've done this I've done this yeah. thing many many times where I said okay take a four wheel skate eighty millimeter take a three wheel skate. 100 millimeter. Look at the boot height. It's the same. It's the same. Then you're like, okay. So when it's bigger wheels, then I'll do I stop. And then they'll be like, okay. So it's the same. Great. So why do, should I get the four? Yeah. I said, like, don't you see? It's lower. Then it's like, <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, just take the four wheels. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the. Uh, it depends. I really believe it, really it depends. depends. I, I think. I think. Uh, in, in, in a risk of generalizing everything let's just say that beginners we give four once you get a bit better I do 110 or 100 and something, something like that I think something that you said it, it, it it's actually the most important which is like the most important is actually what the people yeah. what the person don't, wants don't work against what's in your head you're just making life hard for I'm yourself. gonna give you an example that I don't know if you ever feel if you ever felt like that maybe people at home will will understand what I'm saying you know when you have those pants that you really love and you go skating mm. and you feel like you skate better because you like the pants that you have or the shirt that you like. okay. you know what I'm saying uh, if you come to the shop it's the truth man you come to the shop with something in mind you come to the shop this is your idea of skate you live with something different you're not gonna feel the same you're not gonna feel like we have the pants yeah. you know like i mean even even if, if, like, you, oh. if you manage to convince them to buy whatever they didn't want to get then they just kind of doubt themselves and just like oh is this really what i want blah 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 blah. and just like skate shop owner tip don't make life hard for yourself okay it's so 
the reason why I'm actually really doing these shop visits and making like these podcast things, it's I really, really, really want, but what I want doesn't really matter. I, I really believe that we, it's the truth. <laughs> what I really want is like to have more skate shops worldwide. So then I can do more of these. Yeah. But <laughs> no, it's not that. It's like, I believe that skating needs more skate shops. And I guess a lot of people would actually agree with me. If you think of the skating in the 90s, we're not in the 90s. We, we need to stop talking about that that way. I know. But at the same time, I want more guys like you to share their experiences and so that somehow people at home or whoever is watching this can actually okay. relate with it. Right. So I'll give you, if, if you're asking me, give, give you know, people watching a reason why they should start a skate shop. Okay, yes, All exactly. Right. I was I'll, going to say, like, I, if you could give some tips to yeah. someone. Well, not tips. I'm, I'm convincing you. I'm convincing you <laughs> why you. That one, that one. This one is just a screen. Ah, I'm pointing over there. I know where it is. I know where it is. <laughs> and why you should start a skate shop. It's very, very simple. I, I used to, so I used to work in an agency. An agency handled like telcos, like you know, telecommunications, uh, like the, your mobile carrier, stuff like that. Every day I go to bed. I get home at 8, which is not a very good time to get back. You get home and it's like, oh, what the fuck did I do today? It's like, I convinced some, I tried to convince someone to buy something they don't really need. <laughs> and then you go to bed, you wake up next morning, I'm going to do it all over again. So n- when we started the shop, obviously money wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a, goal. a lot. Well, not the same. I mean, of course, it wasn't. A, of course, you still want to live comfortably. But my point is that, we were not rolling in it when we first started. But then I go to bed and I said, okay, what did I do today? I, I put myself into, I look at the, the, the people who have bought skates and then I tell myself, okay, remember, this is what I tell our, our, our retail team all the time. I say, remember the day you bought your first skates? Do you remember? Of course. Of course, everybody remembers. I remembered I, how I felt. I remember who it was. That guy doesn't remember damn shit about that day. But it was a very, very, very important day to me. Now I tell him, I said, can you imagine you are involved in that interaction? You are somebody's special day 10, 20, 30, 40 times a day. He, that guy, I mean, we've seen it in 10, we've been here for 10, this year is our 10th year. We've seen kids who bought their first rollerblades, like like Curry outside. Saw, I sold him his first pair of skates. He couldn't skate. I mean, he just started skating. He bought it. Now he's, he's killing it. Exactly. So now I was like, I didn't cause that. I didn't do that, but I helped start that. Right, his purpose in life is I'm a rollerblader. You oh, I'm an inline skater. You didn't convince him to buy something he didn't need. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> he came in knowing what he wanted. That was a good thing about it. What did that. he bought? Uh, USD sevens. Okay. This was a long time ago. So anyway, my point is, can you imagine you're involved in that very very special interaction many many times a day to the point where you don't even think it's a big deal? But these kids remember you, and I remember seeing. I was telling Curry as an example, and we have other skateboarder kids who have seen who like you know from very young, and now they're like good skateboarders in the skate in the skate park. They started from zero. It's like, isn't that great? So I went. I may not make as much as I do or did when I worked in an agency. I mean, actually, we do quite okay. But my point is, money suddenly isn't just why you do this you do this because you're as skaters you know how important this day or this feeling is when you first get a pair first pair of skates and then that's what you do that's your life you made someone happy but the, the thing is having but don't okay but don't you think that's a very good reason to start this so of course provided your business plan makes sense and everything but don't you think it's a yeah, great that, that yeah. is all, like you feel like you're doing something good every day that's all important right. that's yep. something that people yep. want something you believe in yes but at the same time like a lot of times there's but just like i said but mm. but okay i'll give you one but before while you think of your but i'll tell no, you no i know i know what i'm going to tell okay. you my, so my my but is when you work in a normal job and you have a long hard day all you want to do is skate and then you go and skate and then you feel good but when you sit in a skate shop and you stare at skates the whole day and you had a long hard day the last thing you want to do is actually go and skate so conversely you actually skate less when you work in the shop because you're just all done with it but yeah it's a small but nah for me it's not even that like what i was going to say it's actually not that it's like when opening a skate shop a lot of times people come with the excuse yeah but i can't i don't have the space to do it i don't know what to do but that's where my butt comes. The amount of people that work as freelancers that work from home mm-hmm. or that work from a, a, a workspace, like they go to a shared office space and all that stuff. 
how, I, how did I open my shop? I couldn't work from home because I just wasn't productive enough. So I decided to rent a little place where I could go and do my work. And my work was already a little bit of like social media management. At first I was just doing like actually one account for PowerSlide, which is not even anything. It's Octowheels, it's nothing. And I was doing other accounts for other things that has nothing to do with skating. But I was renting my own place. And then I look around and I see empty walls and I think, wait, why do I have empty walls if I could actually be doing something for a sport that I like so much? And it's just like all I need to sometimes is just like instead of having that door closed, having that door opened. Yeah. And instead of having empty walls having something on the walls and that's how I started my skate shop so what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes yes it's not easy peasy whatever it's like let's not try to paint things in a way that it's not true but at the same time sometimes it's also not as hard as people think and with people in 2019 working so much from their own spaces and all that and people having um, so much power with social media and so much power like digitally it just it's a way and again i can't expect everyone to try to do something for what is my passion and i can't expect someone to have the same amount of passion for skating as i do but well if if this can help someone why not i do know that most of the brands nowadays if you plan or if you think of opening a skate shop no matter what brand you contact they will try to help you they will try yeah Especially like if you are in countries where there's nothing, in cities that where there's nothing. Man, there's like that stuff where people say, Ah, oh, but I don't have money enough to order 50,000 pairs of skates. Come on. Like, some companies will sell you five pairs of skates. Actually, I mean, this is, uh, I guess Idosh will cover this in his, his podcast, but just touch on it very quickly. That's how he started. He just said, okay, what do you want to order? What do you order? What do you order? Compile an order, get everything in for everyone. And that's how I bought skates from him before we opened our shops. Uh, uh, so he rolled that, he kept on going, kept on going, and now he's got a shop. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's how, that's how you start. Let's start small. Well, if you could give an advice for someone, if you, imagine if you were not trying to convince someone not to open a shop, but if you, the most positive thing about you owning a skate shop, what is it? Um. <coughs> Working with his best friend every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Working with your best friend, okay. Um, but you can, I, really, I, I open I, a shop alone, so I don't work with my. Well, I do with my wife. My best friend, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the most, <laughs> the most important thing is that uh, you want to creative, create a positive environment. You know, with the the place that you work, or if you're opening a skate shop, you want to to have a nice place to work with, right? And you want to touch people's life in a positive way and what really makes me really happy is that the amount of people that I meet today that will come up to me and say like hey you know I used to skate and I remember your shop in SS15 like what uh, you know seven eight years ago you know, that really makes me really happy because two things can happen I can ask them do you still skate Number two, why don't you skate anymore? All right, yeah. and that's opportunity, you know, for for him to to relive that fun of skating, you know, the the I'm sure like that, a wake up call. Yeah, you know, so that should be the goal of everybody, and that that in a way help, and that in a way supports what Keith says, you know, like everything you do in opening a shop should be really positive to whoever's life you touch you know the, the person that buys his first skate will always remember that moment and i bet he was really happy he took the skates home he probably slept hugging his skates right 
The next morning he wakes it up. He's like, "Okay, I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna go out and." Have you ever tried to sleep with your skates? No, I've, I've never. It's the you. worst. <laughs> shit ever. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, what do you mean by sleep with the skates? Which I'm kind of sleeping. No, sleeping. Just holding. Uh, no, 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 no. Sleeping with my skates. Okay. I made a video <laughs> 24 hours with with skates, and yeah. I did put my roller skates because roller skates are wider, and that's how. <laughs> if you put inline skates, you know there's going to be more pressure points because after a while it's just different. So I put the roller skates all day, and then I had to sleep with the skates. Of course. I slept with my feet over the bed. <laughs> so, but the thing is, when you wake up, your feet hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, you might love the skates, but don't <laughs> sleep with it. <laughs> so that's his his skating tip for the day. No, no, the skating the tip is not that. Like my my tip was going to even be another one, which is we were. I've been talking. I told us. I, I said to you. I say to my wife. I say to everyone, especially nowadays. I told you today. And now you're gonna answer me this. <laughs> what, in my opinion, that I told you today, and I, I, I think I kind of explained myself good. One of the most, if not the most important or most, yeah, way of trading in 2019. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you definitely hit the nail on the head when you say it's all about connections. It's, you, yeah. So the people you meet are worth more than the money you get from them today. So here's the thing. This is my opinion. Why is like social media a thing? Why is, like because uh, why is like the likes, the followers, the uh, subscriptions are actually people care about? Because it's a way to quantify connections, mm -hmm. and connections are actually way more valuable than money. Money you get, you spend, you go here, you go there, whatever. But connections you don't spend unless you're burning bridges. You don't spend. Yeah, and connections. It's actually your future because the reason why I'm here with you today, it's because I went to the um, to the power slide meeting in 2016 and we ended up talking. Okay, the reason why I work for Micro, it's because I went for ISPO in 2017. I made an interview which I found at Dodgy. I, I started investigating. It's the truth. I started investigating a little bit about it. I ended up learning more about the company got a proposal studied a proposal put it on a scale best for my family i did it so what i'm trying to say all this is i gave you two examples of connections yeah. and this what i can tell you is i gave you two connections that came from power slide but just like power slide a lot of connections now right now i'm meeting him because of micro that sent me here it's not about the brand it's about when you have a skate shop you're consistently in contact with your customers the amount of connections that you make through that especially if it's just something that you're passionate about it just in my opinion it can make your future a lot better of course it's not about putting it on your resume like if you what you're gonna say on your res resume like i was a skate shop owner it's it's it doesn't really make you shine yeah. but it's not about that it's about the way you treat people the people that you treat you don't know if he's going to be a president of the world one day but if you treat him right yeah see it's like this is a way of seeing things and it's a sketch shop can also help you a lot with that making connections and again connections can be one of the most valuable way of trading 2019 and going forward yeah, for sure. so just maybe you want to you want to say anything else no man should we should we <laughs> this or is there anything that mm. no i guess i think uh, i want to say something i mean wherever you <laughs> sorry wherever you're listening to this i mean support the local skate shop you know like buying online is is it's probably cheaper buying online you know they give you promo codes you know you're buying everything but you know go to a skate shop talk to the shop owners you know the shop owner will and you could tell if the shop owner is trying to sell you something rubbish or trying to really help you start skating you know he's gonna give you a few tips you put on the skates if it doesn't fit right you can tell him immediately he's pro he's probably gonna fix it for you you know so support your local skate shops no matter where you are in the world you know that's that's really what keeps all the shop alive and skating okay it makes sense to me i yeah. think i'm gonna give you an example of that can i give you an example sure. imagine People hate me when I speak about Solomon, but I just need to talk about Solomon again. How many Solomons do you sell per year? 
Zira. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just wanted to know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> have you even ride a Solomon before? I, I never did. I did. A no, I, I did bought a pair of ST. No, I did bought a pair of ST ninety. Doesn't stop me from looking at Blade Tracer. Maybe I should try it. Yeah, I asked myself like when it came out in two thousand and two thousand one. Yeah, did you like it? Mm, no. But what makes you think you like it? Now I I reminded you about. Right. Now the thing is, like I was going to say, is like I actually. Sorry, no, sorry, I'm saying. So I see it today. I say like, maybe I'll like it because everyone says it's so good. So you tried it before many times. You didn't like it. So what makes you think it's going to change? I don't know. Everyone says it's good, so I don't know. <laughs> No, the I, thing is, yeah, yeah. I think people say it's good because nowadays there's a lot of different ways of customizing. And the skate, yeah, the yeah, truth yeah. is, the skate is amazing. It's really comfortable. The, the product has a lot of quality. The plastic is good. It might not be the good as a stock skate for some tricks, like trying to front side torque with a flat Salomon. Mm. I can't. Mm. Some people can. I can't. Mm. But what I'm trying to say here is like a lot of the people that like that skate nowadays, a lot of the people also customize it in a certain way, like with sole plates and all that. So... A lot of people tell me like, yeah, but we don't buy the skate, but we do buy the sole plates. And when we buy the sole plate, we're supporting the skate shop. But I, I actually wanted to make a sketch on this YouTube channel, which I don't think it's going to happen. But it's like, I wanted to make a sketch. It was just me and Mo. Mm -hmm. And then I go to the shop as the as the <laughs> client and Mo is working there. And I was like, okay, I want to buy a skate. And he's like, oh, we don't have it. We just sell, we just sell frames and we just sell sole plates. But I want to skate. Oh, no, you, that, that, it's no company makes them anymore. Because so nowadays go, go, people go, just buy it. Yeah, like, you go to Blade Tree or go to the Solomon's group this is the URL just no, no I'm kidding no. <laughs> no, 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 no. the, the <laughs> truth is like things are like those skates I do know that they're slowly disappearing and they have like a lot of people that really love them and I respect that it's just for the skate shop and for the brands that actually put their like s they like the time and like a lot of effort into making their new product seeing something that was yes it's true when people say the new brands should learn about what they did in the ba in the past and all that but we're talking about a company that had a lot of resources uh, access to things that no none of the brands nowadays have and none of the brands will ever have if they don't get our support yep so this is just a little thing i know i touched it something which is already sensitive and <laughs> especially when i talk about it i get a lot of shit. but uh, it's not about that i'm trying to justify something that i don't need to justify myself i'm just trying to make people understand why i believe it's so important to support the brands that actually do something nowadays yeah. now to finish something i wanted to ask you something um maybe no, no, we're not going to talk about it I was going to ask you if you want to just say something about what happened to the skate shop last year, a few months ago. Which skate shop? To your skate shop, someone that used to work with you. Oh, oh right, okay, that. Uh, yeah, so uh, a very core, integral part of our team, uh, Manai uh, Zafri, he passed away in a motorcycle accident last year, and it's you know we miss him every day, and you know we think about him all the time, and to the point where okay, so. He, he had a bike accident, he passed away very suddenly, I mean, we, it's the middle of the night, we all got a text message, and then he's just gone, just like that. Who got to the text message? Uh, I mean, it was a group text, so everybody just kind of like, he passed away on a bike accident, and Manai was like, the Connected. guy, the, not to say kind he had this boundless energy that, that made people want to skate. I mean, I talk about our reviews online, 99% of those reviews says, Oh, Abang Manai, it was so good, he helped me buy this skate. They remember him till today because he always makes it a point to, Yo, skate, he's got this energy that's really good. An energy that we are trying every day to emulate again because we relied on him so much. Ah, Manai, is, you know, he can, he can, he can, sorry, uh, he can uh, handle this customer. He'll like to talk their ears off and they like it. So now we always ask ourselves, How would Manai treat this customer? How would Manai do this? How would Manai do that? And then we. You know, it's, it's, it's changes a little bit. We also had a bit of a um, crisis in, right after the funeral. We built, uh, me, Yang, and Fizzy, we sat down and said, what are we going to do, man? You know, this guy is one-fourth of us. He's uh, as much we love as Yang and I and Fizzy is. How do we go on? And I was like, we, are, we will. We have to. We will do it. Uh, we took a lot of learnings from that and said, okay, we also started to hear that, you know, maybe he wasn't so perpetually happy all the time. Yeah, we see that, but he also had his problems. Everyone does. Correct. And as his boss, friend, employer, whatever, felt bad, it's like, 
I didn't do anything about it. Not to say that caused his, you know, his accident, but I wish I could have known more or did more and stuff like that. So we sat down and we said, yeah, so we sat down and we said, okay, look, let's let's fix all our lives. Let's try to, you know, make the most of it. It's like, like for Fizzy, for example, back then we was like, okay, your off days is on Wednesday because weekdays are really busy. So he... he uh, weekends are really busy sorry so he, he took it for the team said yeah I'll do it no problem I mean he's, he's been he, that's his life for, for, for a very long time and then we thought I said, you're married newly uh, newly newly-ish married your wife works a 9 to 5 normal days and here you are you don't see her at all and sh- you know you guys are like ships passing the night can't be right as it's my fault it's our fault we are your bosses we are in control of this so we said okay no you take off on Saturdays now we will come in we will do I mean Yang and I will come in and we will cover that so I think the lesson that we get the lesson from, from the like, lesson from this don't take things for granted oh for definitely granted. don't take things for granted I mean you know one day is there and one day is not literally like that you know you you <sighs> I mean uh, he's uh, his impact to a lot of people I mean uh I remember Adrian and if you're listening to this I remember because you posted so many times on your Instagram about him passing and that shows how far Manai yeah, I mean, just has like, reached out yeah, to the world Manai is the crash pad for every rollerblader that comes to Malaysia you have no place to stay Richie stayed with oh. Richie, Richie stayed with him Adrian and stayed with him I don't know there's a long list I can't remember all of them and, yeah. He would, he would, he would just put his hand up and say like, "Okay, you don't have a place bunk, you know, like, you can stay with me, with me, you know, but you gotta hang around a bit. I gotta finish my work, and you know, like, and you probably have to ride with him on his bike, <laughs> you know." And he would just clear up his room and, and put you up for like, I don't know. I think he put up Adrian for like four days, five days, something like that. I don't know, you know, like, a few times, not even once, like a few times. Whenever he was in Malaysia, you know, so. He was phenomenal. I mean, he's such a great guy, and and that's what what we we're trying to. Every time we feel we yeah. feel that ah, oh, I gotta talk to this customer for so long. I'm getting tired. I'm repeating <laughs> myself. And I was like, what would I do? Continue to talk. I was like, all right, come on, let's get you that scale. Let's try this out. Cool. Oh, you don't want to buy? It's okay. Never mind. Here's my phone number. Come in tomorrow. Come and see me again. Like, Bye. You know, it's, it. You gotta. It, that's retail life, man. You gotta do that, and you know. So yeah. Manai, we miss you. We'll see you one day. Okay. I was never lucky enough <laughs> to to meet him. Yeah. But well, rest in peace, Manai. And sorry if I touch like a nah, touch a subject, but it's like I, I bet like we all like you said, even me hearing that, it's like it's a, we're all learning. Yeah. I think I think it's a very important lesson for people who start skate shops as well. I mean this is what this 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 segment is about, right? So treasure your the people who, if they're good reward them is as soon as you can make them your priority i mean they are the ones allowing this to happen right so they're not your subordinates they're not your slaves they're not what they 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 are you know treat your most right <laughs> <laughs> your most right yeah so like like ricardo you know like yeah, like they, 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 me. so we we have our mo is fizzy because without fizzy this shop won't run at all yeah, so every every shop has every like, shop has a, a mo and whatever i've been people just say like yeah my mo my mo this mo it's like it's a mo so <laughs> fizzy is our mo <laughs> with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this this shop visit well if you did enjoy do not forget to subscribe to this channel give us a thumbs up if you have any doubts or if there's anything that we spoke in this little podcast video whatever you want to call it that you don't like or whatever any doubts just put it in the comments we'll try to answer there will be three of these guys yeah. <laughs> me and the we reply as soon as we can <laughs> yeah it's like and and I'm gonna obviously like there's the, the links in the description for your skate shop and for your social media and that's it like if you're thinking about opening a skate business stop thinking and just do it and that's it okay. just don't open in our town any town but kale anywhere else except kale there's two of us there's too many nah come on <laughs> don't be like that if you're gonna open here be better competition is healthy yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That's if you're gonna be open here be better competition is healthy and it's good for everyone so in the end you know what let's just not all forget why we all started skating and that is because it's fun Cheers, guys, Cheers. and see you soon. Got a little longer, so cheap.